As an electrician, I get asked to change sockets all of the time. There's a myriad of different designs and styles out there, ranging in price from the very cheap to the outrageously expensive. I bought five of the cheapest double sockets from one of the wholesalers, so don't go anywhere because I'm going to share with you my thoughts on each of these and tell you if I think they're worth the money. So the five double sockets I have here range from Unbranded, Black, British General, Schneider and Crabtree. Now I'll put these in an order of how I feel the quality level is, starting with uh, the Unbranded at the bottom through to Crabtree at the top. They're not necessarily in price order. So let's get the packets open, let's look at them in more detail and let's see whether the prices actually match the quality and we'll find out what the prices are at the end. So starting with the unbranded socket, uh, we can tell straight away that packaging is also quite cheap. Uh, but let's get it open. And get it open. And let's take a closer look. The usual wiring instructions. Now, as you can see, it's all very basic on the back. Even the plastic on the back looks quite cheap. There's no real branding on it. Or can I see something on there? A PMS, that's a PMS. Um, you can see here the uh, the screws are relatively short in comparison to most screws that are used for fixing these onto the walls except into the back boxes. It has got the screw caps, which is good. They, they fill in there to help hide the screws afterwards. Uh, but one thing notably straight away I can see is that it only has one earth one earthing point um, a lot of double sockets they'll they'll usually have two one on one on either side so how does it feel um, it's not bad fairly smooth it's a little bit on the clunky side if I put a put a plug into it that's tight there's not much movement in there oh wow it is very stiff to get out though wow there we go um, so, but that is probably because it's new. Just needs a bit of uh, bit of work on it. It's just been used a few times. It'll probably be be fine. So, what's it like putting cabling into it? A little bit of two and a half mil twin and earth here. So we'll just uh, unscrew one of these. Oh, that's there's a lot of space in the back. Um, unscrewing the use your screwdriver does move around a little bit. Oh, it does move around a lot, quite a lot actually. One good thing I can see straight away, I don't know if the camera can pick that up, is that the hole is actually ve is very, very deep, um, which is good because you can get a decent piece of copper going in there. And yeah, that goes pretty much all the way in. So how does it hold when I do it up? Feels pretty good, very tough. Um, I'm not going to over tighten it, grips well, but if you can, I don't know if the camera is going to be able to see that or not, you can see that it's burred the edge of the screw slightly. So onto the lap socket, plastic feels very similar to the cheapness of the unbranded one. But I don't even know why sockets actually have plastic on these in the We're just trying to do some things and transport, but I don't know why a bit of cardboard paper wouldn't, wouldn't be any better. Anyway, get the instructions out. Uh, we have the screws and the caps come with its own little bag, which is uh, a good thing. Um, again, screws are probably a little bit on the short side, um, but for the majority, that would be fine. Now, looking at the quality, Again, if we compare the two between the budget one and the lap one, they're very, very similar uh, in plastics. Although you can see that they're different because the lap is obviously a darker uh, black on the plastic than the uh, the PMS one, or the unbranded one. There are two earthing terminals on the lap back of the lap, and you've got the live and neutral on there. Obviously, the earth bar running straight through the middle. 
Uh, plastic wise feels okay it's got nice curved edges to it and again the, it's okay it's a little bit snappy and put in the plug in again nice and tight no movement came out and I dropped the plug it <laughs> came out easier than it did on the unbranded one let's give that another go yeah it was nice and smooth nice and tight there's no grab there um, to, to make it feel like there's too much resistance on it. Put in the cabling in. Uh, these ones, where the, where the terminal screws are, they've actually put a nice bit of round, they've moulded the plastic round rather than kept it open and square, which they do on the budget ones. So the screwdriver obviously was moving around a lot when I was doing those terminals. Let's see what it's like when I do the lap one. Much quicker, much simpler. There's no movement on the screwdriver because it's got the plastic around the edge which holds the screwdriver blade in place. Again, these look nice and deep for pushing the full uh, cable depth. And yes, that is, that is a good depth. Screw it in. And again, that holds it good and proper, nice and tight. Uh, there's no burring on the edge of the screws, which is good. They should seem to be fairly, fairly solid. Um, I can keep tightening them up. Shouldn't over tighten these anyway. So that's not, not a bad socket. Um, my personal experience of using these is though that I won't use them because I do find them unreliable. If I've got a client that wishes to fit these because they like the design, more than happy to do it, don't have a problem with that, but I won't guarantee the workmanship on these. So if, if they get a failure, which unfortunately I have had a lot with this brand, then um, I'll go back and obviously replace it, but the customer will have to pay for my labor time to do so. So the BG double socket. Plastic feels more plastic, you see what I mean? It's got more uh, um, a better quality feel to it than the previous. Again, instructions. And this time, they tried to do that bit a little bit by putting the screws and the screw caps actually in paper, which is better because obviously it's recyclable or it'll rot, uh, decompose if it gets dumped by. Well, we know what electricians are generally like, don't we? <laughs> anyway, moving on to the socket, you can see it's got a, it seems more robust. Uh, whether it's the color or the molding on it, it does seem to have a better quality, again, than the LAP or the lap socket. But shape and design, very, very similar. Moving on to the screws. If the camera can zoom in so i've just changed the camera focus to help with this because as you can see the collar on the edge of the screw terminals if you can actually get that in there you can just about see that in there now that is so that in transport or when you're unscrewing it or moving them around they don't fall out you don't lose the screws neither of the other two sockets that we looked at so far have that feature on them they are quite deep i think yeah, there's a lovely deep hole in there again for putting the uh, putting the cable in. Lovely deep, probably the deepest so far. So far, in fact, that if I were to screw this cable in there, I would have to back it off to make sure I actually connected it to the copper and I didn't go through the actual insulation. Screwdriver slipped off a little bit there, but. Once you get it going, you fall into the moulding of the plastic, again similar to the LAP one, so the screwdriver doesn't move. That's a good tight feel on that. So moving on to the switches. They're a relatively nice feel, again quite clunky though. Um, not a huge upgrade from the LAP. But that does feel a bit smoother. In and out, no issues. Nice and tight. 
So moving on to the next. The Schneider socket. Plastic feels nice. Again, yeah, it doesn't really matter though, but it does give a good sign, a good hint of quality of that socket. Um, screws, spare caps, as well as the actual caps. Um, again, the screws look a little bit on the short side, but for um, dry lining boxes and when metal boxes are fush, uh, they should be more than long enough for the majority of applications. Looks like there's a bit of a novel going on in there with the instructions, but not the actual socket itself. Uh, but that looks very professional. It looks very good, high quality. There are two earthing bl terminal blocks on either side and the live and neutral are in the middle. Notice also with these, they've got a slight downward angle so that it goes, uh, the terminal blocks kind of slope slightly. So if you've got the cables coming from the top, you bring it down and then you slide them up or vice versa, if they come from underneath, they can just slide straight in. They look very deep. Let's get the screwdriver in there. Open one up. That looks very deep. I don't know if that can be seen on the camera at all, but it's even deeper than the BG. Let's stick a piece of cable in there and find out. No, it's not actually. Uh, it just gives the illusion, but it is obviously deep enough. Let's see how they feel. Again, these are, uh, they've got the edge around the edge of the, the lip on the edge of the screw so they can't fall out and nice and tight that's not going to go anywhere which is what you'd hope from any of the sockets if we pull that all the way out you can see it's got the lip underneath so the plastic molding actually locks it in place therefore it's not going to fall out and transport feel wise that's Again, very nice, very smooth, a uh, little bit on the clunky side, but not, not overly bad. Nice and tight going in with a plug, nice and smooth coming out, no movement on there again. And it's got lovely nice curved edges to these. There isn't another socket on the market that I'm aware of that actually looks like this. Hager may be quite similar. I don't have one with me to compare it though, unfortunately. But I actually really, really quite like this double socket. So onto the final socket, the Crabtree, which I personally think is probably the most expensive out of these five. Just because from my experience that the, the quality of these, uh, in my humble opinion, is, is very, very good. And uh, well, they're made in England as well, so go for it. Let's get the packet open and have a look. Again, the plastic feels good. It's got a bit of good quality feel about it. Um, but again, I don't know why these companies are still using plastic in this day and age. Two screws of a good, decent length. Uh, unlikely that you will need to find another screw to uh, to, to fit these, because the majority of cases, these will be long enough to fit into the back box. Instructions. Bit of a book going on there again, but still nowhere near what the Schneider one had. And then we look at the back. Now, it does seem to take up a lot more space than the other sockets, but uh, profile-wise, it seems to be a bit, a bit thinner. They're, they're not all coming leaping out at you. You've got two earthing points at the back, and they split the live and neutral, live at the top, neutral at the bottom. Now, with these, you can see that they haven't got the plastic molding around the edge at the bottom, and there's no lugs to stop the screw from falling out. But what they have got is the curvature for you to get your screwdriver in there to undo it. And the screwdriver stays on point, doesn't slip off because of that. Now, see, I've just taken the screw out. So there is one bad thing about these, is because they don't have that stopping lug, you do run that risk. I'll just leave that out for a moment. I'll look at that again in a second. So how does it feel with the cable in there? Well, as you can see, hopefully in the camera again, the nice deep holes. I'm gonna put this into the neutral hole, even though I'm gonna use the live cable, just to see how deep that is. And that is 
very decent there's a decent depth in there let's see how it feels when you grab it now obviously you can put up to two two and a half mils or even three if you've got a spur uh, on a ring main coming off one of these double sockets you can do that with all of these um, or you can put four mil cable in depending on the application lovely and tight that's not going to come out anywhere now the uh, feel of the switches now that to me probably has the nicest feel of any of these switches so far it's smooth there's a click there but it's a click and it doesn't feel like a clunk so that to me is a lot nicer it is probably what um, the end user in my experience would like plugs go in nice and out very much nice and smooth um, ends a little bit tight a bit clunky but they come out nicely there's no real proper movement in there the downside to these is, is that they are an old design the uh, 10b uh, i don't know if this is what they're based on or whether 10b is, is what crabtree are now i don't know the history of it maybe one of you do and you can let me know in the comments below but there's no no screw caps for these they are generally quite thick on the face um, but that's that's the old style so price wise am i right let's get into this so am i right with the prices now one thing i am going to do is from showing you what i've just done i'm going to change my mind i think a schneider is actually slightly more expensive and i'm going to put the schneider at the top of the list because of the quality and what i've just shown you with the screw terminals and just generally what i think about it so let's find out so as predicted the unbranded one is the cheapest at one pound sixty now this is a bit of a surprise to me as well the schneider two pound nine is the second followed by the lap the last one at two pound forty eight then, wow, which is the Crabtree at £2.69, followed by the BG at £2.79. Admittedly, I did not expect that to be the order, except obviously I, everybody, we could all put money on the fact that the unbranded one would be the cheap one right at the bottom of the pile. Now, I'm actually really surprised about this, more so because the British General is usually my go-to double socket to use. And that's mostly because it's good quality in my experience and because it's square edged. A lot of my clients, they have square edged double sockets. It's just easy to mix and match with something that's very similar. I've had very few failures from these. However, I am not opposed to using other sockets at all. I use Crabtree quite a lot. A lot of properties, again, they have the old 10 b style. Very easy just to swap it out with a new Crabtree one. Um, Schneider, very, very different style from anything. Used mostly for uh, new builds or rewires or just uh, customers that wish to update and have something different in their properties. I'm sorry, I do, they, I just don't like them. Anyway, the double pole version of these, which as I suggested earlier, which I explained earlier, is where they switch both the live and the neutral, not just the live. I personally prefer to fit double pole sockets because in a fault situation where your RCD, which is your protective device in your fuse box, keep tripping, it's much easier to isolate. Sometimes you can't get behind your sofa or behind your fridge freezer or stuff, so you can just flip the switch. So that makes it much easier from my point of view. But from a price point of view, the unbranded one would be £2.84. Still the cheapest. The Schneider, still second at £3.71. Followed by the Lap, again at £3.09. The Crabtree, I think, is the best bang for your buck out of this. It's only 10 pence more expensive for the double pot, £2.79. 
And unfortunately, the price on that BG is £4.19. Wow. Tell me what you think. Or what sockets would you use in your house? Does it even bother you that you have mix and match? Do you just want your socket working? If I came to your house and you said, just get it working, would you be happy for me to stick an unbranded one in? Or would you want me to put a more expensive one in to match what you already have? There are so many different styles and shapes out there. Uh, there are metal ones that come in brushed chrome that you can pay upwards of £20 each for those. You can even get pink ones um, for those that wish to completely design a room in whatever style you like. Um, so yeah, please let me know. So that's it. That's my opinion on these five sheep double sockets. Do you agree with me? Do you use a different brand? Please share your comments below. If you like the video, please give me a thumbs up as it also really helps. Thank you for watching. See you next time.